Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio 20 Basics video. Today we're going to be looking at the playlist. The first couple of videos in this playlist looked at the channel rack and the mixer. We're going to be seeing how to navigate the playlist, how to organize it, color things, group things, arrange all of our samples and patterns. We're also going to be looking at how to customize the playlist, how to work with audio, and also how to use markers. So let's just get straight into it. So I've just started by opening up a project so that you can see some different ways you can organize things inside the playlist. But the playlist is where you're going to be organizing and arranging your song. In our channel rack video, we talked about creating patterns, which are all stored up here. And this is where you are going to be arranging your patterns into a song. So it's arranged as a grid. You have time signatures along the top. You have scroll bars at the top and the sides so that you can navigate throughout your project. And you can easily select your patterns from the list and just paste them in however you like but let's get a little bit of control over this. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about navigating the playlist. Like I said, there are these scroll bars at the top and the side, but I like a few little shortcut keys. So if you hold Alt and scroll, it zooms in vertically. If you hold Control and scroll, it zooms in horizontally. That's just gonna help you get a lot of fine control over the playlist. And if you find yourself zoomed into something and you don't really know where you are, you can just hold Control and right click and it just zooms out all the way. Some of these next points are gonna seem really simple but for a complete beginner, you have time running along this way. So this is the start of your song on the left. This is the end of your song on the right here. And when you press play, this green marker moves along showing where you are in your song. When I zoom in, you'll see that the playlist is divided into bars and steps, so you can very easily see sort of the timing in your song and where everything's supposed to be. So you'll want to use these markers to line up your audio patterns and to line up your MIDI. For instance, you can see that the kick comes on each step, and with my MIDI clips up at the top here, I have them starting perfectly on the line. Just to finish off some navigation, as long as you're in song mode, Left-clicking will move your marker so that you can choose where you want the audio to start playing from. And right-clicking makes a selection. So this could be a selection that you want to keep playing around if you were recording or just listening and tweaking some sound design, or it could be selecting your whole song for when you want to export it. So we should be a little bit more comfortable with navigating the playlist, but let's actually start adding some patterns. So you'll know that your patterns are available here or in the pattern picker if you have that enabled. And I'm just gonna choose this high bass pattern and I'm just gonna add it in there. So I've just added it in by left-clicking and I have the draw tool selected up here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about these tools. These tools are sort of like your essential toolkit in the playlist. So you have a draw tool, which just lets you left click and add your clips in. You right click to delete them. And then you have a paint tool, which lets you paint them in with one click, right click again to delete. A separate delete tool, a mute tool to mute clips if you don't wanna hear them. And then the next most important one is the slice tool. So you can cut up either MIDI clips or audio clips just by left clicking and cutting like that. I would recommend becoming really familiar with the shortcut keys for these. For instance, draw, the shortcut key is P and for the slice tool, the shortcut key is C. This way you'll be really fluid uh, at using these tools. When a clip has been cut, whether it's MIDI or audio, you can select at the edge and drag it out to its original length. And if you go back to the slice tool and right click and slice, it will delete the smaller section for you. When you're making a selection with a tool, if you hold down shift, it's gonna lock it vertically so that your cut's really accurate. Or if you hold down alt, it's gonna make it really smooth and fluid so that you can choose exactly where you want it to be. When you have a pattern in the playlist, this little box up here, if you right click on it, it gives you more options for the pattern clip, such as renaming it, making it unique or deleting it. I like to try and keep my playlist really organized when I'm creating music. So you have these tracks here and where FL Studio is different from other DAWs, like I showed in the beginner's guide video, is that your patterns are not limited uh, to or locked to any specific track. You can have bass patterns like that. You could drag a guitar sample and put it on the same uh, part as your bass. So basically you have to stay organized yourself. So on the same track that your bass is, I like to right click, press rename, color and icon and then you can give it the same name as this and the same color. You can manually type in the name here and you can add the color from this list here. Or what I sometimes like to do is to right click and just select auto name and then it 
ties them together exactly the same. You'll notice down here that in the song I have some automation clips which we will cover in a future video and there's a group here. So how you make a group is you select the pattern underneath, you right click and you select group with above track or just press G which would be the shortcut key. I'm just going to add one more in by right clicking and pressing insert or I and then when you have a group you can right click on the top one, select auto color group and it's going to color the group for you. The last thing to mention about the groups is that when you have a group, you can press this little up arrow here and it collapses or expands the group. The only thing you need to be careful of here is that if you're deleting clips, it will actually delete everything that was under there as well. So you want to be careful with that, but this button here will just collapse it. And if I were to do that for the whole project, it just cleans up what it looks like. And I've got an awful lot less to look at here. Now that we've zoomed in a bit, you'll notice that the playlist is broken into these vertical lines and these show you sort of the time signature of your project and where a beat lies. So with the MIDI clips, you know, you'll probably want to drag them so that they start on one of these lines and you can also change how accurate this is. So you can select, you know, a half beat and then the pattern will be jumping in smaller steps. So that's the main snap options and the playlist has its own little snap to grid here. So if I select that right now it's following the main FL Studio snap settings or I can change it to line, sixth of a step, a half beat, anything that you want really or none. And this just gives you the option to really uh, smoothly control where you want your pattern clips to be. It's good to snap them perfectly in when they're MIDI clips, but if you're working with audio, you might wanna deselect that so that you can drag it exactly where it needs to be. If you have a pattern clip selected, you can just press Alt to detach it from the grid for a moment if you want some fine tuning. And then if you release Alt, it's gonna go back to snapping into place again. There's a few more options to customize the playlist. So in this playlist options tab down here, you can go to the view and you can change all sorts of things. You can change the grid color and you can also change sort of what the clips look like. So there can be nothing behind the clips. I can select it to look sort of crazy like that. And there's all sorts of different options like this. If I was working with automation, it might be good to have the background color knocked out so that I can really see the lines finally. But for the rest of it, it can be good to have it colored in. So try going through all of these options and trying to find settings that really work well for you. Much like the video I made on the channel rack, your sort of copy and paste functions work perfectly well in the uh, playlist as well. So control C, control V is going to copy and paste something or pressing control B is going to paste it into the next available uh, slot. So far, we've only worked with pattern clips. And if I show you this little bit up here, it's showing that the focus is on pattern clips, but you can change the focus to be on automation clips or on audio clips. And the focus will change automatically when you select a different type of clip. For instance, if I select this audio clip here, you can see in the top that it's already changed it to audio clip. And just like the patterns, you can sort of cut these up and manipulate them however you like. You can select at the end of them and resize them appropriately, just like you could with the MIDI clip. The only other thing I'd say about working with audio is that you'll want to double click and select a declicking mode. So choose some sort of crossfading so that where it cuts, it smoothly sort of cuts away instead of leaving a pop or a click uh, in your song, you'll want to make sure that it smoothly blends away. When resizing, it should just resize naturally, but if anything strange is happening, check that this stretch option isn't uh, selected, because if you select the stretch option, this will be repitching the sample depending on how you have it selected to repitch, um, and it's going to change it quite dramatically. So if you're trying to just sort of cut or extend a sample and it's not working, check the stretch button up here because that might be your problem. If we turn our attention to the top bar here, you'll notice that there's this sort of, a load of colors collapsed into each other up here. And this is sort of the playlist preview. So at the top here, there's a playlist options. And if you go back to the view, mini playlist preview, you can enable or disable it or make it double height. So if I just turn it off, it disappears. And if I turn it back on, I'm gonna enable it and it'll come back. Just underneath that, where it's counting out the, the bars or beats in your, in your song, you have the option to add in markers. So if you press Alt and T, it will add a marker in. And these are really useful for all sorts of reasons. So a really basic way is to just add markers in at the start of your song, at the start of verses, choruses, or to mark out sort of important sections or lyrics in songs. But another way to use them is to right click on them you can change the time signature of your song. So you could make the time signature three, four for this section of the song, and then you could jump it back 
uh, 244 later on, which is sort of crazy, but it's a function that works. You can also use these markers to loop back to certain parts in the song and also punch in and punch out recordings. I talked about this punch in and punch out feature very extensively in my how to record an FL Studio 20 video, so I'll leave that uh, for that video. Otherwise, this video will start getting a little bit too long. The last thing to show, which is sort of separate from the pattern clips and the other audio, is that if you have a, a sample, for instance, just any sample, you can just drag it straight onto the playlist and use it like this and sort of paint it in however you like. So you're not limited to just the MIDI clips or sort of audio loops. You can drag in individual samples and treat them exactly the same way. So that's a basic overview of how the playlist works in FL Studio 20. There's no major changes from the previous versions. And I hope that if you're brand new to this software, that's given you a little bit of an overview of how it works, but it is very flexible. My biggest tips would be to try and stay organized so that nothing in the playlist is really confusing or complicated. There's really no need to overcomplicate this or arrange it in a way that doesn't make sense. So just, you know, use colors, keep naming things, and slowly but surely just keep building up your songs and arranging and the playlist will make sense to you in no time. So I do hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you very much for watching. And please do pour through this FL Studio 20 playlist if you need help with any of the other features or functions in the software. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.